You are capable of so much more than you think. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to stop letting your ego get the best of you and start living a life that's truly fulfilling. So, hey, my friends, it's Dr. Harry here. And again, I know how it feels to let your ego take control. It's not a good feeling. And in fact, it can hold you back from achieving your true potential in life. But don't worry. Again, in this video, I'm going to show you how to overcome that and live a life that's truly fulfilling. So sit back, grab yourself a pen and paper, and let me tell you a great story about a foggy night at sea. So plowing at night through a rough, foggy sea, a battleship's radar suddenly indicates an object directly in its path. The ship's captain sends a radio signal. We are on a collision course. Advise you to change course 10 degrees north. A response comes back. It crackles over the radio. It says, negative. We advise you to change your course 10 degrees south. Now, the captain can now see a blinking light from the approaching object. And he's upset. He's perturbed. He bellows a reply. I am a ship's captain. Change course 10 degrees north now. And then uh, another crackle comes back from the radio. I'm a seaman's second class, comes a reply. Advise that you change your course 10 degrees south to avoid imminent collision. Now the captain is now furious. He's fuming. He blurts another command. This is a battleship. Change your course immediately. And then another calm reply comes back. This is a lighthouse. Now... The battleship promptly changed its course. Now, my friends, this is a great reminder. And it really is a great reminder that I think to stop letting your ego get the best of you. And we see that a lot in medicine. So ask yourself, are you letting your ego get in the way of your success? It's time to step back and take a look at that. Your ego can be a powerful tool, no doubt, but it can be your downfall as well. Use it wisely. And don't let it control you. You are in charge of your life. So make sure you're living the best life possible. Now, doctors, it's time to put your egos aside and start making a difference. Your patients need that. Your team needs that. And your family and your friends need that. They need that more than ever before. So let's get started. The first thing we have to do is define what ego is and how it can manifest itself in our lives. Now, ego is a certain kind of self-importance that can manifest itself in many ways. It can be overly assertive and direct its energy into showing off of our showing off our successes. It can also lead us to take excessive pride in what we become, making us feel better than others due to some accomplishment or goal. Now, while ego may seem attractive in the moment, it can actually have lasting negative impacts in our lives. When we prioritize impressing others over true growth and self-improvement, our relationships suffer and our internal sense of strength gets, well, clouded. To combat this, it's important that we focus on building up ourselves first before turning to validation from outside sources. Taking time for self-reflection, trying to practice gratitude are great ways to remain grounded while identifying areas of improvement and staying humble along the way. Second thing, my friends, is understand how your ego might be holding you back from reaching your true potential. Now, everybody has an ego that is both their ally and their enemy. And on one hand, our egos give us the confidence to tackle challenging tasks and make difficult decisions, and that's a great thing. But on the other hand, our egos can also tell us what we are not capable of doing, creating a self-limiting perspective and preventing us from achieving some of our greatest potential. Now, it's essential for personal growth and development that we recognize when these feelings are coming up so then we can challenge them um, rather than letting them rule us. Don't let your inner doubt stop you from reaching your true potential. Now, being mindful of how your ego might be holding you back can help develop your self-awareness, which leads to incredibly rewarding personal growth, and it opens um, these new opportunities, and it fosters a positive relationship with, your, with others be it your, your patients, be it your team, be it your family, be it your friends. Third thing, friends, is you have to learn to recognize when your ego is at work. Now, now it's easy to let our egos take control at times, but it's essential to learn how to recognize when the I factor has entered into an equation and is skewing our perceptions. 
So being aware when this occurs can help us stay humble and grounded so that we can make decisions from a place of understanding instead of one filled with pride and envy. So in addition though, recognizing when the ego is at work will also help nurture our relationships as we naturally become more considerate and more patient and more open-minded as a result. Learning to recognize when your ego is at work will benefit not just yourself individually, but everyone else around you as well, which is really what the heart of servant leadership is, which is what we talk about a lot here at Medicine Revived. But you also have to find ways to keep your egos in check. Now, it's natural to feel proud at times. However, keeping an excessive amount of pride under wraps and ensuring that your ego doesn't stand in the way of reaching your goals is key. Now, ego can give a false sense of self-importance and can prevent us from seeing beyond our own perspective. I mean, it doesn't take long just to look on social media and you can see this exactly what I'm talking about. You know, viewing things from multiple angles, considering different opinions and staying attuned to feedback can do wonders for managing expectations and allowing room for growth. An approach focused on addressing conflicts diplomatically not antagonistically, can also help promote cooperation between different people. So instead of focusing on serving yourself first, try shifting more of energy and attention towards helping serve others instead. Again, the heart of servant leadership. This can prove to be an invaluable tool for keeping your ego in check. My friends, you have to let go of the need to always be right or better than others. It's okay to be competitive, and I love being a competitive, but there comes a point when it comes to be damaging. If we get too hung up on being right or better than others, it can lead to negative thought patterns, stress, and things like unhappiness. Learn to let go of the need to always prove that we're right or better is one of the best things you can do for yourself. Not only does it open up our world to, to new ideas and new opportunities, but it also allows us to learn from those around us who may have different opinions and frankly different life experiences. Letting go of this need makes us humble, it makes us understanding and more accepting. So today, take some time for yourself and remember that what matters most is your effort and attitude towards life, not whether you think you deserve a gold medal every single time. My friends, practice humility and gratitude to help balance out your ego. Practicing humility and gratitude helps keep our egos in check, allowing us to focus on connecting with our true inner self. Now, while it can be easy to get caught up in the superficial trappings of life and overrun with pride, you see that constantly. But it's important to realize that these are merely illusions that ultimately have little impact on who we truly are. So by taking the time out each day to practice humility and incorporate moments of gratitude, we can shift our perspective from what is external and tangential to what is internal and meaningful. Understand the powerful role that humility and gratitude play in connecting us with our real identity can not only help keep the ego at bay, but open up a state of emotional well-being that leaves us feeling contentment. It helps us feel joy. It helps us feel peace. Now, my friends, ego is a complex and an ever-present part of our lives, especially for those of us who are in medicine, but that shouldn't be an excuse to let it control your life. Being mindful of your ego and learning to identify its triggers can help you take steps to keep it in check. So to do this, remember that pride isn't all there is. Practice humility and gratitude and learn to see mistakes or failures as opportunities for growth and improvement. Make it a habit too. The more you check yourself, the easier it will become. So if you're still struggling with balancing out your ego or reaching your potential, remember that high-performance coaching exists and I'm a certified high-performance coach and I'm here to help you become who you want to be. Your future self will thank you for that effort today. So if you are hitting a plateau in your personal or your professional life, then consider high performance coaching. And if you're wondering yourself, well, what is high performance coaching? Make sure you hit the link, which is right beside this video, or if you're driving, it should be in the show notes, click that link, get on my calendar, and you'll have a free one-on-one session with me to talk about what high performance coaching is and to see if it's a good fit for you. But until next time, have a great day, and I'll see you right back here tomorrow morning for another Morning Rounds 
before your morning rounds. Have a great day. Bye-bye.